Hello all, my name is Krish Nagan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to continue the deep learning tutorial. This will be the continuation of deep learning tutorial and we are going to basically discuss about padding in convolution neural network. In my previous video, I have already shown you how does a convolution operation takes place. So let me just revise a little bit of convolution, uh, how the convolution operation takes place and then we'll continue with respect to the padding. So I took an example that I had an image which was basically six cross six pixels okay six cross six pixels and then i was applying a vertical filter which is basically three cross three of size and over here and this is vertical edge filter sorry and the output that i was basically getting was a four plus four four cross four pixels output now you need to notice one thing over here guys uh this kind of convolving operation is basically used from strides right we were basically jumping from one place to the other place we are doing the multiplication operation plus we are doing the summation of all the values and finally we were getting the output now one thing you have to note over here, initially I gave a 6 cross 6 pixels, right? And when I applied a filter of 3 cross 3, okay, and this filter may change, okay? We may also have a 5 cross 5 filter. We may also have a 7 cross 7 filter. It depends on different, different type of filters, what type of operation they basically do. Now when I'm applying this 3 cross 3 filter, I'm basically getting the output as 4 cross 4. Now you notice one thing, initially I gave a 6 cross 6 image, I'm getting the output as 4 cross 4. Now what is happening over here? We are losing some amount of data when it, when it is basically passing through one of the filter. So if we want the same kind of output over here, so I basically want that I will be able to get 6 cross 6 pixels output only from my 6 cross 6 uh, pixel of images. At that time, if you want to get this kind of output, we basically have to apply something called as padding. Now, if you remember my formula of calculating this output dimension with respect to the n value, so suppose my n, I'm saying that it is basically six, fix, uh, six pixels. Here I'm basically saying that my filter size is three. So I showed you that one formula that I basically apply is n minus f plus one. Here my n value is six, filter size is five, sorry, three plus one. When I'm calculating this, I'm getting an output as four. And that is what this output dimension I'm getting. Now what if I want to get the output dimension of six from my six cross six pixel. So here, my output will be 6. I have to calculate this n value. Okay. Now suppose if I calculate the n value, it will be basically this f will go with here and it will become plus 3 minus 1. And if I calculate this n value will be 8. But you notice that we have 6 cross 6 pixel. How can we make it as 8 cross 8 pixels that we need to think. And for that we'll use a technique called as padding. Now padding what it does is that if I want to make this 6 cross 6 into say 8 cross 8 pixels, I'll add a padding of 1 suppose. I'm adding a padding of one and what this does is that it tries to add one column sorry one row over here another one column over here one more row on the top and finally one column on the left now this is basically like you you have your home over here okay and you are basically creating a compound on, on the uh, on surrounding the home so that you don't lose anything from here right because you see that if I was just using 6 cross 6 pixels I'm basically getting 4 cross 4 output so I'm basically losing some information now what I have done is that I've just taken padding is equal to 1 and I have basically created I've added one row on the bottom one row on the top uh, one row uh, one column on the right hand side and one row on the left hand side now this particular row will then I'll just uh, join all these lines it will now become 8 cross 8 cross 8 pixels this image will now become 8 cross 8 pixels you see this 8 cross 8 pixels fine now when I have this 8 cross 8 pixels right you can see that I'm having 8 rows and 8 columns now now what value I can fill in this is basically of two types one is that you use G zero padding you have something called as zero padding wherein the first technique is basically called as zero padding where you will just insert zeros everywhere like this the other technique is that you try to find out which is the nearest value and you try to put the same value. Suppose this is your neighbor, right? One is your neighbor, you'll try to put one. One, again one. Suppose zero is your neighbor, you try to put zero. So the most uh, useful technique, most commonly used practice is basically that you'll try to use zero padding. Okay. Everywhere you'll try to fill it with zero. Okay. Now, when you are using eight cross eight and now when you apply a filter is equal to three, you're basically going to get six cross six, right? Because now you, your image, just imagine that it was 6 cross 6, you have added a padding on top of that. 
then you have applied a filter and finally your image output is 6 plus 6. So now let us see that how this formula changes if I apply padding. So suppose if I'm adding a padding value of p is equal to 1. Okay. So now my formula basically changes as n plus 2p minus f minus 1. n plus 2p minus f plus 1. Sorry, it should be plus one or minus one. Let me just think about it, okay? So n plus two p. So let's let's uh, you know n value is basically six because that was my original size. Plus two multiplied by one minus three, right? Now when I am multiplying this, it becomes eight. Okay, it should be plus one. Sorry. So when I'm uh, multiplying two cross two multiplied by one plus six, it is basically eight minus three, which is my five plus one, which is equal to six. Okay, I'm sorry because of this little bit confusion. So I've just made it as plus one. Okay, so when I apply this particular operation, now I'm able to get six cross, right? Now understand guys here, based on the type of output, right? If you try to apply this particular formula, you will be able to get the same pixel of the image size. So that basically means you're not losing much information. In addition, you'll be able to get more edges. How? See, when I suppose if I'm using zero padding over here, and when I apply this filter, this is one more edge, right? You can see that this ones are here, zeros are there. So this becomes one more edge. And this, this is also one more edge, right? This is also one more edge. And suppose here you also, you are putting zeros. This will also become one more uh, horizontal edge. But current, currently I'm just basically seeing which will be the vertical edge. So I'll be able to find two vertical edges in this and I'll be able to get six cross six. Okay. And again, here also one additional row will get added everywhere. Row and column will get added and your output will look something like this, which will be six cross six. So you should try to use padding because it will actually give you the same image size after you apply a filter operation. That basically means now you can continue creating number of many number of convolutions based on your image size, based on the types of filters that you want to extract. I will show you that this particular convolution operation may be repeated many number of times. Okay. So this was about padding in convolution neural network. I hope you understood why we basically needs to apply padding. That is basically that we do not, we do not need to, you know, um, remove some of the uh, information from the images. I want all the six cross six pixels over here also and try to extract more and more information from them. So this was a video all about padding. I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe the channel if you have not already done. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you one and all.